I guess food is a priority. Hello and welcome to Just World YouTube channel where we talk about finance, personal development, travel and community service. If this is your kind of content, kindly subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time we upload a new video. In today's video, we are going to talk about how much I spend in a day. Or rather, we should say how much we spend in a day. Comment down below if you have ever broken down your daily expenses. If you haven't, maybe it's time we do it together. So take your pen and paper and let's do this. My first expense, the one I consider when I wake up in the morning, is housing. I wake up in a house. I thank God for that. So for that housing, how much is your daily expense? So we will take it this way. If your house rent is 3000, you divide it by 30 days. So it means every day you spend 30 shillings on housing. If you are three people, for instance, it means every person in that household spends 10 shillings every single day on housing that is approximately 0.1 of a dollar maybe at this point you should ask yourself is that amount reasonable being a daily expense don't look at it from the perspective of just a uh, house rent you could be having a mortgage unless you're already living your own, in your own house so you may consider it not an expense. The next expense we're going to talk about is food. There is breakfast, lunch and dinner. So how much do you spend for your breakfast? How much do you spend for your lunch? And how much do you spend for your dinner? In my case, I categorize my dinner and my lunch as one because whatever I cook for dinner will be sufficient for today's dinner and the next day's lunch comment down below how you combine the expenses to make a saving for my breakfast i try to avoid shopping from the supermarket or from the shop and i try as much as possible to make it at home comment down below if you do your cooking for every meal if it is breakfast every single day lunch every single day is the aspect of doing maybe batch cooking for a week such that you reduce the daily cooking or you make the daily cooking more efficient if you do batch cooking then you can divide the quantity of food that you make for that specific period divide by the number of days for instance if you batch cook for 30 days Divide the cost that you have incurred on whatever you have cooked in bulk by 30, then you can tell your daily expense. If you cook daily, then you can just have a breakdown of how much you spend every single day. And this means you have to be cognizant of the fact that maybe you have some food in the house. For instance, most of the times you will find maybe you have starch in stock. So maybe you're buying the other ingredients. So that portion of the starch that you're cooking for that day should be accounted for. Comment down below if you already know your daily cost of food. We go to the next cost, which is electricity or we can call it power depending on the lighting that you use maybe you use kerosene maybe you use electricity maybe you use solar you also need to divide your monthly expense with 30 so that you can know how much you spend every single day you also divide by the number of people in the house we are using 30 as an illustration because some months will have 31 others will have 20 something days so depending on the month you can divide but on average because most of the months are 30 you can consider using 30 for purposes of assessing your daily expenses the next expense is water maybe you get water from your borehole maybe you get water from a 
a natural source maybe the river maybe you get water from a tap but there could be an expense associated with that water so you have to put it into consideration for instance if you're adding your cost of water perhaps you may have a challenge deciding whether if you use a pump whether it falls under electricity or it falls under water comment down below with what you think, where you think it falls the next expense is transport there is the transport to work there is transport maybe to your other businesses and there is also transport to school for the kids so you have to factor in and see how much you are spending on all the expenses regarding transport if maybe you can review the modes of transport that you're using to see if either you can make a saving or you can enhance on efficiency and improvement maybe after this review you might consider consolidating your travel depending on how efficient cost effective and accommodative it is comment down below with the outcome of the notes that you have taken and the review you have undertaken on your own expenses if this video has been helpful please remember to give it a thumbs up comment share thank you so much for watching this video if you're new kindly consider subscribing if you are a returning subscriber and my premier gang thank you so much for your continued support may god bless you see you on our next one